Hey everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to take a look at Solus Linux, which is currently one of the fastest growing Linux operating systems. If we actually go ahead and check out DistroWatch right now, you'll notice it's actually number 5 Linux. Last year when I was doing a quick overview of the top 10 most popular Linux distributions, I don't even think Solus was up there on the top 10. So it's gotten really popular really fast to the point where it's beating out other operating systems like Antigos and Fedora, as well as the original version of Arch Linux. So the only ones that are actually more popular than Solus right now, in terms of page hit ranking at least, are Mint, Manjaro, Debian, and Ubuntu. So I wanted to go ahead and take a look at Solus, give it a test, and see why it is actually cool. So if we go ahead and boot up the home page for Solus, uh, you'll notice that basically they talk about the operating system as it's designed for the home user experience, making it easy to use, it's got rolling distribution, and they also have their own package manager built out of the box, which is both a positive and a negative. So it's cool that they have their own package manager because it allows them to organize things how they think makes sense. So if you go to like gaming on Solus, uh, you can get categories you don't see on some of the other distributions, like massively multiplayer online games right there. Uh, however, if you actually dig a little bit deeper and you check out all the software that exists inside of the Solus Package Manager, uh, you might notice it's a little bit on the low side for the number of actual offerings. They've got a lot of the standard stuff you see in every distribution. For instance, if we go to Office Software, it's going to have LibreOffice built in, out of the box, pre-installed, and you're able to install many other apps. But there's nothing too particularly unique going on here, and generally, I like using Arch-based distributions because if you install Yaourt as an extra package manager in addition to Pac-Man, it allows you to get just about anything you want installed on a Manjaro or Arch-based system. Uh, in addition to that, and this is probably one of the other only downsides I really have to complain about, because it has its own package manager, that also means that when you go to the terminal, you have to basically learn the new syntax of a different package manager, and that's EO package. I also read that they were going to be changing it to SOL as the terminal command to be able to get stuff going, to be able to install stuff. Um, it's not too big of a deal, you'll just need to learn a bit of extra syntax. You won't be able to use apt-get, and you won't be able to use pacman if you're used to, say, Manjaro, Ubuntu, Debian, blah blah blah. So as far as out-of-the-box software goes, it has Firefox installed as the default browser, GNOME MPV as the default video player, and Rhythmbox for music. Of course, in the package manager, it's very easy to install VLC, and they do have a third-party section here, which I do like. Uh, a lot of the really common software that you just have to grab, like Flash Player, um, a lot of people are going to want Google Chrome, and then down here, Slack for communication at workplaces. If you're a programmer, there's a good chance you have to use Slack. Uh, also Skype, really useful list of stuff. Oh, even Spotify's on there, so yeah, those are software I would pretty much always install, so having that as a third-party section for the Software Center is actually pretty cool. Though, uh, on any Linux distribution, you can get stuff installed, it's just a matter of how much work you're actually going to need to put into it. By the way, currently I'm running on the Budgie desktop, which to me I think is very user-friendly. It's a lot like Windows. I mean, you can see Windows 10 actually running on my computer. It's almost like Windows. Um, just very easy to use, straightforward, simple start menu. You can see that the icons in the user interface look pretty nice. And in addition to all that, if we go ahead and type in Budgie desktop settings, you can see that their options settings window is actually very nice. So first off, it's got a dark theme out of the box, so you can switch between light and dark as you prefer. So if you watch my videos, you probably know I like to use dark themes a lot. In the fonts tab, you can actually customize the size and the font of pretty much every window or area of your desktop inside of Budgie, so that's very nice. And I think one of the coolest things is that creating an additional panel, for instance, if we want one at the top, is as simple as clicking about it a button there, adding some apps into this list, and choosing the settings for where that panel is going to go. So if you actually want to add in a lot of these extra panels, like for the right side or the top of the screen, you can do that quite easily and you don't really even need to get into the terminal all that much to do it. Also, the auto start menu here, I think that's very nice. Um, just being able to add in applications to start with your computer, 
not needing to edit, say, bash rc is going to be pretty helpful for most new users to Linux. So overall, taking a look at Solus, it's pretty easy to see why this is a very user-friendly distribution. I could see a lot of people, especially new users to Linux, getting a lot of use out of it. It's just that Manjaro is Arch-based so that if you're really keen on using Pac-Man or Yaourt and those sorts of tools, you would have those over there. Whereas in Solus, it's kind of running on its own set of tools. And just to briefly explain what the rolling updates thing, which is really, really useful, is that when you actually install Linux, uh, the rolling updates version of Linux, it will continually update itself even at the core of the operating system. So you never need to, say, download a new version of Solus you can just actually have it update itself as long as you're connected to the internet. So it avoids you having to put the latest version of Solus onto a USB drive and to reinstall the operating system at any further point in time, it will just always be able to update itself. So that's really cool. So I would say that if you are tired of the common Linux distributions which have been out there and tried and trusted for a long time, such as Mint or Ubuntu, you might actually want to go ahead and give Solus a try. It's growing really fast and it does seem like a very solid user-friendly version of Linux. So that's going to be it for this brief video on Solus Linux. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in some of my future video content.